Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is addiction, the health and healthcare cost implications. Now, according to the American Society of Addiction Medicine, that's right, addiction medicine has its own society here in America. The definition of addiction is that it is a treatable chronic disease. Okay, addiction is a disease. It's treatable. It's chronic. It's long-lasting. Now, it's characterized by the use of substances or by engaging in behaviors that are compulsive. In other words, you have, you're compelled to do them and they're harmful. So it comes from either substances or behaviors that you're compelled to do and they're harmful. Okay, so in the, the official world of diagnoses, right, the, the, the substance, addiction to substances is referred to as substance use disorder, okay? There are 47 million Americans over the age of 12 that have substance use disorder. That's 17% of the population, okay? Almost one in five. So I'm here to start out and say, look, this uh, video, there's no judgment, okay? This is, this is not about any sort of like moral stance about uh, addiction, okay? It's a disease. I'm sure many of the people watching this video either have an addiction or maybe they had an addiction in the past. They have family or friends or colleagues that have an addiction right now or have had an addiction in the past. I mean, it is arguably affected like almost everybody in America, okay? And in the same breath, I will also say that it's perfectly reasonable for people who are in the life of an addicted person to also have healthy barriers in regards to that addicted person's behavior. So I think both things can be true. I think you can have a person who is addicted and it's a disease, and I think it's perfectly reasonable for people in that person's life to also have barriers, uh, boundaries, if you will, around that disease, okay? But this is not coming from a place of judgment today. Let's just talk about the facts, all right? now. Of those 47 million people with substance use disorder, 17% of Americans, 10% of them uh, abuse alcohol. They have an addiction to alcohol, okay? 6%, so that's the largest one, is alcohol. The second largest one is prescription drug abuse, and that is largest is in the form of opioids, but it could also be in the form of like, like Xanax or Valium, which are benzodiazepines, okay? So 6% have some sort of uh, prescription uh, use disorder. Now, for illicit drugs, 0.7% of the US population uh, is addicted to cocaine, 0.6% is addicted to to methamphetamines and 0.2% is addicted to heroin. Now, outside of like substances, there's also addictive behaviors, right? You can be addicted to gambling, you can be addicted to sex, and it can be um, compulsive, and it can be harmful. And another big addiction in America is food. 17% of the US population between the ages of 50 and 64 is are they're addicted to food this is according to a university of michigan survey eight percent of seniors of people over the age of 64 are addicted so for employer sponsored health plans just know again it's almost one in five almost one in five of your plan members between the ages of 50 and 64 are addicted to food and these addictions like it says here they're harmful Right? So in the case of, of food addiction, it can lead to diabetes, it can lead to heart disease, it can lead to certain types of cancers. Um, alcohol, everyone says, oh, cirrhosis of the liver. Believe me, alcohol causes a lot of other problems in addition to cirrhosis of the liver. First of all, it gives you horrible cholesterol. So you could be like, oh, well, I totally eat healthy. I'm like a vegetarian. Yeah, but if you're an alcoholic, then like your cholesterol will still be like horrible, okay? All right, next. It causes anemia. It can cause congestive heart failure. It can cause neuropathy where you have painful burning in your hands and feet. I could go on, but there are, you know, you can die of a sudden uh, heart attack from cocaine. You can uh, die of respiratory suppression from an overdose of heroin, okay, so you, or opioids, right? So you, you get the point that it's physically harmful, okay? Now, 
What is one of the main triggers for addiction? One of the main triggers for addiction is a mental health problem itself. So there's something called a dual diagnosis where a person has some sort of mental health challenge and they have an addiction. And oftentimes it's like depression or anxiety and feeling depressed or anxious feels terrible. People don't like to sit around and be like, oh, I'm so depressed. Typically they do something about it. And that something that they do about it is oftentimes you know, you know, drinking alcohol, using illicit drugs, eating. And so, in fact, 22 million Americans, so in other words, like almost half of the people who have a substance use disorder also have some sort of depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, et cetera, they have some sort of mental health diagnosis as well. Okay, so what I have here is a small Venn diagram. So you have about 50 million Americans have some sort of mental health problem. And then you have 47 million Americans have so a substance use disorder, and then the overlap of the two, where people have both a substance use disorder and a mental health problem, is 22 million. And so it is super important to understand that in treating addiction, oftentimes, for like half the people with an addiction, you have to treat the underlying mental health condition as well. And then the other thing that all of these things share in the addiction to is they all st stimulate dopamine in the brain. And as I've talked about on previous A health so food stimulates dopamine in the brain, sex and gambling stimulate dopamine in the brain, cocaine stimulates dopamine in the brain, um, alcohol stimulates dopamine in the brain. And so it, that chemical stimulation uh, in, it, in and of itself creates addiction where you require more and more um, of the substance because you become tolerant on it and then when you don't have exposure to the substance you experience withdrawal and then you have cravings and that entire cycle um, is in part caused by the excess dopamine stimulation in your brain and so it's so it's a horrible hamster wheel it's a horrible trap that people get trapped in okay but there and, and it has tremendous financial implications as well. So people with substance use disorder for employer-sponsored plans, they cost on average $26,000 per year as opposed to your average person on an employer-sponsored health plan costs $10,000 per year in healthcare costs, right? So it's 2.6 times, 260% if you have a substance use disorder versus if you don't have a substance use disorder. Okay, now, specifically, the, the, the leading one, the leading one is alcohol. Employer-sponsored health plans spent $8 billion uh, in regards to people's uh, alcohol use disorder, and they spent, and, and number two after alcohol is opioids. It's the prescription opioid addiction where they spent $7.6 billion. Now, I am not here to paint a picture of doom and gloom. I'm here to paint a picture of hope. As the American Society of Addiction Medicine, as it intimates, there is a specialty called addiction medicine, and it is a one year fellowship after residency training, and Many of the physicians that go into addiction medicine, they were family practice doctors or internal medicine physicians. Those are the two specialties that most frequently then do a fellowship in addiction medicine. So there are people who are specially trained in this. There are nurses that are specially trained in this. There are counselors and psychologists and th psychiatrists that are specially trained in this. And the point is, is that whether it be through a combination of therapy and medications and group programs, there are countless examples of people who have overcome their addiction, who have overcome their mental health uh, diagnosis or challenge, and they've been able to live wonderful, happy lives. I, I know an attorney who he's married, he's got two kids, and he's been clean for 20 years. And when he was an addict, his life was horrible. It was a mess and his life today is beautiful. And so it's so important for us if we work in employee benefits to understand addiction. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.